As we head towards the summer vacation season, road trips become part of our holiday plans. And if the journey will take more than an hour or two, a snack stop has to be factored in. The question is, should we take the fast food route or not? Chef Vani of Marigold doesn't think so, and she shared some tasty traveling food ideas with me. Pad course in my family is a huge thing. If we're traveling anywhere for longer than two hours, we have to pack for a war, a famine, and obviously the possibility of Armageddon. A simple picnic to Emerentia often entails carrying around a biryani pot, a generator, and a trailer, and I'm not even joking. Today, Chef Vani Padiachi from Marigold is doing her take on pad course, and I wonder if it's similar to mine. Vani, it looks like we're ready to go on a trip, but is pad course a thing in your family like it is in my family? It's huge. I mean, I remember the biryani pots used to go in the back of Dad's bucky. All the kids, we used to pile into the buses and aunts and gran, and as soon as we take off, and then it's like, 10 minutes into the trip and then we're hungry. Are we there yet? What can we do? And the only way to shut us up literally is to like keep stuffing us with sandwiches and little samosas and kachoris. So yeah. Well, I don't think that basket is full enough for either of our family. <laughs> so let's go fill that in. <laughs> So, do you remember tin fish sandwiches? I still crave my mom's tin fish sandwiches all the time. I'm going to do my take on the tin fish sandwich, which is fried sardines. Funny, why sardines? Durban is iconic for its sardine run, and I just want to do something yummy and fun and different. And we're going to eat this with a tandoori roti on our trip. So we're going to start off with the marination. It's a very simple and easy marination. It's kasturi murthy which I'm going to crush in my hands like so, so it gets nice and powdery. And then a little bit of ginger garlic paste, some Dijon mustard. So Dijon mustard is not a very Indian ingredient. <laughs> it's not, but it helps to break down the fishy and adds to the yumminess of it as well. And then some white vinegar. And this also helps to break down the flavor. A little bit of salt some deggy mitch, because you know, we love it nice and <laughs> spicy. A little pinch of turmeric, and Zach, will you grab a spatula and sure. just mix? And then while you do that, I'm just gonna heat up the stove, and then I'm gonna add some ghee to the pan. We don't need to marinate this for a long time, so this is well coated, so all I'm going to do is just gently put this in. You just want to fry it on a nice hot heat. So all it does is give it a nice crispy skin and then the inside, the meat is nice and juicy and tender. And then that's ready to turn over. That's perfect. Look at how gorgeous and crispy that skin is. And those aromas are sensational. So I'm just gonna put this in the platter and we're just gonna cover it and then we're gonna put that into our basket. And later on, we're gonna have this with some tandoori roti. So the next dish we are going to be making is masala aloo puri. That sounds scrumptious. So the ingredients we need is some atta flour. What is atta flour? Atta flour is refined brown flour. So it's healthier, it's good. And when you use it in your dishes to deep fry, it doesn't absorb the oil. We need about a cup for this dish. And then some potatoes, some deggy mitch, ground cumin, ground coriander and a little bit of salt and then I'm just going to mix that with a little bit of water little by little because you don't want a floppy dough and not a dry dough either so it's just mix little by little while I'm making this can you chop some coriander for me please do you remember that knife skills I taught you a while ago I do indeed Now this is a beautiful workable dough. So now we're gonna form some a little patties. You just dust your hand with a little bit of the atta flour and just sort of give it a bit of a shape, but not too thick, not too thin. It's nice and wet and moist. So you just want the puri to be just very floppy. And then we can just set it aside. Zach, can you bring the board closer to the fryer as our oil is ready? 
Okay, and you want to just put them in gently into the fryer. It normally takes about eight to 10 minutes to cook. Okay. So once that's nice and crispy on the outside, but still gooey on the inside. <laughs> exactly, these look good. So I'm gonna just plate them onto a paper towel to absorb the excess oil. Zach, can you plate that up for me, please? Of course. These look scrumptious. They do. And lastly, we finish that off with a little bit of chaat masala. Bunny, what's next? Utter chicken. We have our utter flour. And all I'm going to do is make a soft, workable, pliable dough. A little bit of salt. And just make a well in the center. And I'm going to add my melted ghee and then some water. And the water you want to add a little by little, just enough to pull it all together, and that's looking good. This dough needs to rest for about an hour, and I've pre-made some dough that's been resting. So let's move on to our marinating of our chicken. We need some deboned chicken thighs, and that's all that's going in. I'm going to add some ginger garlic puree to that, a little bit of chaat masala, <laughs> some mustard oil, a good pinch of kashtari methi and also rub that in. Some hung yogurt, some degi mitch, coriander powder, salt. So I'm going to give you the spatula so you can give that as a good mix, please. So the next process is actually rolling out the dough that's been resting. That lazy dough that's been <laughs> resting. Yes, that one. <laughs> Okay, so all we're doing is we're just going to flour a surface, dough, and just give that a bit of a, and you see it's all come together. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece. So Zach, all I'm doing is I'm just pressing it out, just to give it a bit of a, and you don't want it too thin, because it's going to cook overnight as well, you want it to slow cook so that dough cooks. And also, with the dough and the chicken cooking, it's also beautiful and yummy on the inside. So let's put the chicken right in the center. And then all we're doing is just folding, tucking this in on the sides. There we have our otter chicken. <laughs> Barney, you have created an absolute feast for the two of us. Thank you. And to finish it off, I've made a mixed vegetable subsea and a chicken tikka wrap. You spoil me. <laughs> Let's hit the road. Let's go. True to road trip tradition, this feast doesn't require cutlery because that would take away the pleasure of licking your fingers.